matter of the gurukul vidyabhyas the gurukul uh, education right so how exactly what is the exact meaning of indian knowledge system the indian knowledge system it is characterized by its holistic and interconnected nature and it emphasizes the integration of knowledge across various domains and a deep respect for the interconnectedness of all aspects of life so when we say that the statement the indian knowledge system is characterized by its holistic and interconnected nature it refers to the traditional knowledge and philosophical framework that has developed in india over thousands of years it highlights several key aspects uh, the first few the first three aspects i should say it is the holistic nature second one is the interconnectedness third one is the integration of knowledge when i say about holistic nature indian knowledge system it often take a holistic approach to understanding the world and human existence that means they aim to comprehend the entirety of a subject or concept considering all its aspects rather than focusing on isolated parts this holistic perspective is deeply ingrained in various fields including philosophy medicine and spirituality then second point interconnectedness interconnectedness indian thought emphasizes the interconnectedness of all things it recognizes the different aspects of life and the universe are interdependent and cannot be fully understood in isolation that means alone we cannot understand so this particular interconnectedness or this interconnected view is evident in concepts like dharma dharma means the duty or the righteousness and karma the law of cause and effect which underscore the idea that actions and consequences are interlinked and finally the integration of knowledge indian knowledge system often integrate various domains of knowledge like um, science philosophy spirituality and ethics this in integration is exemplified in systems like yoga ayurveda vedanta where physical health mental well being and spiritual growth are seen as interwoven components of a person's life so we can say that indian knowledge system it has had a profound influence not only on the indian subcontinent but also on the world as many of its concepts and discoveries have transcended geographical boundaries and continue to shape global knowledge and thought so let me just give the introduction to the indian knowledge system it showcases the rich heritage of india's intellectual traditions the iks or the indian knowledge system encompasses a wide range of disciplines which includes philosophy science and maths medicine literature arts and culture spirituality and more the indian knowledge system it it is deeply rooted in the cultural spiritual and philosophical heritage of india and it has made significant contribution to global thought and understanding i believe my friends other resource persons will be taking these things the the things which i am showing in the uh, diagrams health and wellness traditional knowledge in maths consciousness studies astronomy ancient structures all these uh, each each and every day one by one resource persons will be handling these sessions so let me just show the organization of the indian uh, knowledge system the iks it is intricate and has evolved over thousands of years it is characterized by a holistic and interconnected approach to knowledge by seeing the diagram itself we can you may be able to understand a few of these things so if we explore the india's ancient wisdom and try to connect it with the modern achievements you can say that the significance of iks or indian knowledge system it lies in its rich heritage of wisdom holistic approach to life and profound contribution to philosophy science spirituality and culture it offers a pers diverse perspectives and timeless insights that continue to inspire and influence global thought fostering a deeper understanding of the human experience and the interconnectedness of all knowledge domains 
So we need to say that India has got the or the Indian knowledge system has got a long history and diversity. So the it has a rich and diverse history with the contributions from various schools of thought, including Vedanta, Yoga, Buddhism, Jainism, and more. So this such traditions they have evolved and adapted over time, leading to a multifaceted approach to understanding the world. When we talk about the spiritual and ethical focus, many Indian knowledge systems have a strong spiritual and ethical dimension. They often explore questions of morality, purpose, and the nature of reality alongside practical knowledge. This spiritual aspect is evident in texts like Upanishads and the Bhagavad Gita. Before uh, getting into the historical overview of uh, IKS, uh, overall I need to say the statement whichever I have mentioned before that underscores the unique philosophical and intellectual tradition in India which seeks to grasp the interconnectedness and wholeness of knowledge and the universe emphasizing a harmonious and integrated approach to life and understanding. So we will see one by one the historical overview. The historical overview of IKS reveals a continuous tradition which is of intellectual exploration and discovery that spans thousands of years. The very first one, the non one, that is the ancient Vedic period, which is from 1500 before Christ era and to up to 600 uh, before Christ era. So this Indian knowledge system finds its roots in Vedic texts, particularly Rigveda, which contains uh, hymns and chants related to cosmology, rituals, and spirituality. The early Vedic period laid the foundation for religious and philosophical thought. Then comes the next period, that is the classical period. A classical period which talks about prominent philosophical schools which is emerged such as Jainism and Buddhism which is actually challenging which was challenging the traditional Vedic belief. If you see the religious text which was there in the Vedic, uh, ancient Vedic period, Shruti and Smriti. Shruti is completely of Samhedas and Mantras, Brahmana, Aranyaka and Upanishads. And this is again, it is uh, it is present in uh, ancient period as well as in the classical period, the Upanishads. Smriti, it is uh, which is uh, remembering something that is the the sutras, the Puranas, Ramayana, Manusmriti, Mahabharata, Srimad Bhagavad Gita, all these belongs to the classical and ancient Vedic period. So the Upanishads, a group of philosophical texts, explored profound questions about the nature of reality and the self. Then comes the Mauryan and Gupta empires. This from 322 before the Christ era to 600 Christ era. That Mauryan empire under Ashoka, the emperor Ashoka promoted Buddhist principles of non-violence and ethical living. Gupta and India witnessed a full flowering of arts, literature, and scientific discoveries, with scholars like Aryabhata making significant contributions to mathematics and astronomy. Post-classical and medieval period, which is ranging from 600 Christ era to 1780, that is Christ era. This particular era saw the development of classical Indian arts. So we can say which includes the modern or the classical dance forms, which still we are uh, practicing. Example, Bhardhanatyam, music and architecture. Important texts like Ramayana, Mahabharata, and works of even works of the Kalidasa, it were composed during this particular period. Ayurveda, the traditional system of medicine, was further developed. Coming to the next uh, period, that is Islamic influence and Mughal period, that is 12th to 18th century Christ era. Islamic scholars and rulers made contributions to Indian mathematics, science, and architecture, leading to a uh, blending of cultures and knowledge system. Akbar's reign promoted religious tolerance and cultural exchange. 
Then comes the colonial era and British rule, that is from 18 to 20th century of AD. The British colonial period witnessed the translation and preservation of many Indian texts, but it also led to the decline of traditional education system. Here you should see, we should say that most of the information which were not documented or it was transferred to the other people through word of mouth. Some of the documents are not even we, are, we have not found where it is being preserved or kept. The, uh, the Western education and modernization influenced India's knowledge landscape. And finally, the independence and modern India. That is from 1947 to present. So independent India has made significant strides in modern science, technology, and space exploration. Indian culture, including yoga and Ayurveda, though, that has gained global recognition. India's IT industry has made substantial contribution to the world economy. Throughout its history, the Indian knowledge system has demonstrated adaptability and resilience, blending diverse influences while maintaining its core values and principles. It continues to shape contemporary thought and contribute to a global understanding of spirituality philosophy, science, and culture. So these are some of the key aspects and components of the Indian knowledge system. Philosophy, spirituality, science, mathematics, literature and languages, arts and culture, education system, and modern contributions. So this, again, in one by one, we will be seeing. So this is the first one, like I have to say, with Vedas and scriptures. Vedas, this, this is the oldest and most respected text in Hinduism, which comprises of Rigveda, Yajurveda, Samaveda, and Atharva Veda. Each Veda has four parts Samhita, Brahmana, Aranika, and Upanishads. You can say each Veda has its own schools, its own Samhitas, its own Brahmanas, Aranikas, and even each and every Veda has sub, that is Upanishads and Shrata and Sutras. So Samhita and Brahmana and Aranyaka parts usually describe various deities, rituals and mantras. These three are collectively called as Karma Kanda of each Vedas. And Upanishads, Upanishads, these are the philosophical texts that explore the nature of reality, self and the ultimate truth. The ultimate truth, which you can call it as Brahman. These are collectively called as Jnana Kanda of each Veda. And philosophical system. Under philosophical systems, what we have is the Vedanta, Nyaya, Vaisheshika, Sam Samkhya, Yoga, Mimamsa, Buddhism, and Jainism. The Vedanta, you can call it as it's a school of Hindu philosophy that interprets and elaborates on the teachings of the Upanishads. And Nyaya. This is the system of logic and epistemology. Vaisheshika, it focuses on metaphysics, atomism, and the nature of reality. Samkhya, which explores the dualism and the distinction between Purusha. Purusha means the consciousness and Prakriti. Prakriti is the matter. And Yoga, uh, frankly speaking, this is the system of physical, mental, and spiritual practices to achieve self-realization which is now in modern world, we are using it in a different, different way. But the actual yoga is, which is the spiritual practice to achieve self-realization. Mimamsa, it is concerned with rituals and hermeneutics, especially related to the Vedas. Buddhism and Jainism, it is independent philosophical and religious traditions with their own texts and beliefs. Coming to arts and culture. Arts and culture, uh, we have, we may have to divide it into four different parts, classical arts, architecture, visual arts, and literature. Classical arts, the dance forms like Bardhanatyam, Odissi, Kathak, and music st um, styles like Hindustani and Carnatic. Each and every state of India, I have to say that they have their own uh, dance forms or the Natya Shastra, which was uh, started from Bardhamuni. That is, you, uh, it is called as a timeless classic. And the architecture, architecture, 
I will explain about it uh, again, temples, palaces, and monuments which showcase our heritage. And visual arts, painting, sculpture, and scraps with rich symbolism, and again, with the cultural significances. Literature, we have got a lot of uh, classical textbooks or texts in various languages, which includes or the starting the very first language in India, if we say about the literature was in Sanskrit, then Tamil and other languages. This is our India as diverse heritage, which is shown through the architecture. We have a very rich and diverse heritage, which was spanning several millennium. One of its most iconic contributions is the construction of magnificent temples. It showcase intricate carvings and detailed sculptures. So the one Vastu Shastra, this is an ancient architectural guide. Even now also, even we are when we are constructing houses, we will see uh, Vastu, right? So this played a pivotal role in shaping the layout and design principles of Indian buildings, which emphasized harmony and balance in their structures. So the one of the best example of this, of this is the Kajiraho temple. I will explain the ancient Indian architecture, which is known for its rich and diverse heritage, with the various architecture styles and structures developed over millennium. This is some of the prominent architecture styles and examples from ancient India. You can see over here. In the Vedic architecture, I have not included in the picture, that is the earliest, the very first form of Indian, ar Indian architecture is associated with the Vedic period. That was the construction of fire altars and uh, sacrificial pits. Some of the places, if you see, still it is there. I mean, the, the leftovers or the <clears throat> diggings, you can see that. Then comes the Buddhist architecture. Buddhist architecture, this style emerged with the rise of Buddhism in India and includes structures like stupas, like Sanji stupa, monasteries, Nalanda and Vikramshila, the first picture which I have mentioned shown over here, and even the rock cut caves, Ajanda and Delora caves, these ones. And then comes the next era, that is the Hindu temple architecture. So the Hindu temple architecture evolved over centuries and is characterized by its distinct style, which is features like uh, shikharas, towering spires, uh, mandapas, that is assembly halls, and intricate stone carvings. Examples include the Kajuraho temple uh, and um, the first one with the previous one, which I have showed the Kajuraho temple over here. And um, the Konark Sun Temple, the the this one, the uh, the second one I'm showing over here, and the uh, Brihadishwar Temple in Tanjavur. So such temples are the examples for Hindu temple architecture. Then comes the Dravidian architecture. It is Dravidian architecture. It is primarily found in South India, and it is known for its towering gopurams, the ent entrance towers. And these gopurams or entrance towers are intricately carved temple complexes. The best example for that is the Meenakshi, Madurai Meenakshi temple. And the Sri Rangasnada Sami temple in Sri Rangam are another example. Then comes the Islam, Indo Islamic architecture. So, with the advent of Islam in India, a fusion of Islamic and Indian architecture elements occurred. So, famous examples include the Kutub Minar here and the which is in Delhi and the Juma Masjid in Delhi and the Taj Mahal in Agra which is also uh, belongs to the seven wonders of the world then comes the Mughal architecture so Mughal Empire left a significant architecture legacy it is which is characterized by its grandeur symmetry and the extensive use of white marble so again the Taj Mahal is also uh, we have to say it is part of Mughal architecture, along with the Red Fort in Delhi and the Juma Masjid in Delhi. Then into Saracenic architecture that is emerged uh, during the British colonial, colonial period. And that is a blend of Indian, Islamic, and European architectural elements. Examples include the Victoria Memorial in Kolkata, which I have not shown over here, and the Gateway of India in Mumbai. 
then comes the Ra rajput architecture so that is in various regions of india rajput rulers developed unique architecture styles that is forts and palaces in rajasthan uh, like uh, amar fort and city palace in jaipur which those showcase the rajput architecture then comes the chalukyan and rashtrakuta architecture which developed in ancient south india and are known for their rock cut temples such as the kailash temple in nellora this is the one i am showing over here next to the madurai meenakshi temple and in between this madurai meenakshi temple and kutub minar which is the kailash temple then indo gothic architecture during the british british colonial period some buildings in india were constructed in a fusion of indian and gothic architecture style uh, such as the uh, the the one which is in mumbai the chhatrapati shivaji terminus so these are some of the few examples of diverse architecture traditions that have shaped india's built heritage over thousands of years so each style reflects the cultural religious and historical influences of its time and region then comes to the next one that is the science and mathematics so in mathematics you have you can say the contributions by indians it did include the decimal system zero and advanced algebra and the indian knowledge system which has the astronomy pioneering work in observational and mathematical astronomy so these are some of the indian scientists i should say the medicine uh, charaka math astronomy varaha mihira gravity baskara literature vyasa valmiki kalidasa and uh, atomic theory uh, kanada and zero aryabhata and the development of ayurveda it is a holistic system of medicine and again in the indian knowledge system which comprises of languages the diverse specified or diversity in languages i should say so here india is known for its linguistic diversity which numerous languages that i should say each and every uh, cities or each and every states even they have different different languages and dialects spoken across the country so sanskrit it is considered as the classical language of india and it has played a significant role in the development of many regional languages <coughs> spirituality and religion this i have already mentioned hinduism buddhism jainism sikhism the majority of the religion in india with a wide range of uh, beliefs practices and uh, th that is hinduism buddhism which was founded by the uh, by siddhartha gautama the buddha and emphasizing enlightenment and compassion jainism focused on non violence ahimsa and ethical living sikhism a monotheistic religion founded by guru nanak the education system and modern knowledge and innovations historically the education system was imparted through the gurukul system and uh, which a uh, traditional system centered around close teacher student relationships and experiential learning and uh, they where the students lived with their gurus and learned through oral traditions there was the the documentation things were not there writing in the books and uh, uh, keeping the things but it was every every vidya it was given through oral modern knowledge and innovation india has made significant contribution to modern science technology and innovation in fields such as it space exploration and medicine cultural traditions and practices so india has got various festivals again if i am saying each and every state has got their own state festivals common festivals rituals and cultural practices which reflect the deep rooted knowledge system and spirituality and yoga and medica meditation but this the uh, type of practices are deeply ingrained in, in indian culture and contribute to physical mental and spiritual well being legacy of intellectual inquiry so legacy of intellectual inquiry ancient india fostered a tradition of intellectual inquiry with scholars and thinkers exploring questions about self first thing second ethics third metaphysics and the nature of universe itself so we can say that these particular statements about in a legacy it illustrates the profound and enduring legacy of knowledge and wisdom that has been cultivated in ancient india influencing not only the subcontinent 
um, but also making significant contributions to global thought and understanding. So let us see, why do we need Indian knowledge system or should we require Indian knowledge system? Because what we see is in modern India, we feel that the touch of our own Indian knowledge system, it is a little bit missing or it is not, we are not actually following the Indian knowledge system here. Why we need it? Do we need it? So we need the Indian knowledge system because it offers valuable ins insights and wisdom that can enrich our understanding of various aspects of life, uh, which includes, again, philosophy, science, spirituality, arts, and culture. So this particular knowledge system provides diverse perspectives and holistic approaches that can complement and enhance our no global knowledge, fostering a more inclusive and interconnected world. So this is, uh, again, the more salient aspects of Indian knowledge system, holistic approach. That means the Indian knowledge system takes a holistic view of life, emphasizing the interconnectedness of various facets, including mind, body, and spirit. And when it comes to the spirituality and uh, philosophy, a strong emphasis on spiritual exploration with the di uh, diverse philosophies and paths to self-realization such as Vedanta, Yoga and Buddhism. Then comes the second feature that is ancient wisdom. Uh, deep roots in ancient texts like Vedas and Upanishads which contain profound insights into the nature of reality and human existence. Diversity means a rich cultural tapestry of languages, traditions, and practices which reflects the actual diversity of India. And even yoga and meditation practices which promote physical and mental well-being, it have been widely adapted globally. Then the science and mathematics, which contributions in mathematics, which I have already be, uh, mentioned before, and the invention of zero, astronomy, and the medicine, which often predates similar developments in the West. Uh, then talk about the arts and culture, a vibrant, vibrant heritage of classical music, dance, literature, and visual arts that contributes to influence global culture. And talk about the ethical living. Ethical living, which emphasizes on ethics and morality in daily life, including the concept of dharma, that, is, that means the righteous duty. And the talking about the language diversity, that is a multitude of languages, each with its own unique literature that is contributing to India's linguistic richness. Talk about traditional medicine. Traditional medicine, uh, already again I have mentioned the development of Ayurveda. That was a holistic system of medicine that considers the individual's overall well-being. Then coming to the Gurukul system, that was again another one more salient aspects of in IKS. That is a traditional education system which was centered around the uh, disciple and guru. And uh, the, the relation was that there was a close teacher-student relationship and experiential learning. And uh, next is global impact. Historical contributions like the spread of Buddhism and the transmission of knowledge along trade routes influencing neighboring regions. Need to see, talk about modern achievements. Modern achievements in the case of India's contributions to modern science, technology, and innovation. Uh, innovation means which includes the space exploration, IT sector, those are the, uh, the, again, these are aspects of Indian knowledge system. Then coming to the sustainable practices. So a long history of sustainable agricultural and economical, uh, ecological practices are there. In cultural traditions, if you see a rich tapestry of festivals, rituals, customs that dispered, uh, differ, uh, reflect <coughs> the devoted knowledge system. So these uh, salient aspects which I have mentioned over here, these uh, aspects of Indian knowledge system contribute to a unique worldview that continues to inspire and shape both Indian society and the global understanding. So they offer a valuable, they offer valuable lessons 
and perspectives that can be applied to contemporary challenges and contribute to a more interconnected and holistic approach to knowledge and life. So now let us see what are the different impacts of Indian knowledge system on development or uh, acquiring modern knowledge and development. So the Indian knowledge system has had a significant impact on modern knowledge acquisition and development in various ways. So in first thing, if you see science and mathematics, Indian contribution to mathematics, including the invention of zero and the decimal system, have had a profound influence on modern mathematics and science. Even concepts like algebra, trigonometry, and geometry, those were developed in ancient India, India and form the, this formed the basis of modern scientific and engineering disciplines. Talking about medicine, the impacts. The Ayurveda, the traditional Indian system of medicine, it has influenced modern alternative medicine and holistic health approaches. Modern research is increasingly exploring the utilization or the efficacy of Ayurvedic treatments and herbal remedies. Talk um, comes to philosophy and mind-body connection. Concepts from Indian philosophy such as mindfulness and meditation, it have been adopted in modern psychology and mental health practices. So yoga and meditation are widely recognized for their physical and psychological benefits. Spirituality and well-being. Indian spiritual practices and philosophies have contributed to the global interest in mindfulness, wellness, and holistic living. Holistic living again. So it is like the wholeness without other. You, you need to depend on others, right? Everybody will be talking about independence, independence. But still, the holistic, the truth is uh, everything is interconnected. So concepts like karma and dharma have influenced ethical and moral discussions worldwide. Then comes to the linguistic and language studies. India's linguistic diversity and ancient scripts, they have attracted linguistic researchers and scholars. So scholars from many abroad countries, developed countries, are actually coming to our uh, country and they are trying to do research on it. They want to learn more about it. Because we have, our, uh, our culture goes back to many, many, many thousands, thousands of years before. Our, our uh, universities like uh, Taxila and Nalanda, it was there for uh, many different bef years before. The study of Sanskrit and other Indian languages has contributed to the field of linguistics. Then talk about the Indian, uh, uh, the, the global philosophy and interconnectedness. Indian philosophies emphasizes uh, interconnectedness, which aligns with modern ecological and environmental thinking. These philosophies have encouraged, again, a holistic approach to addressing global challenges. Coming to, uh, to talk about the culture, the cultural exchange. India's cultural exports, including music, dance, literature, and cinema, they have in, enriched global culture and artistic expression. So there are many people, again, from the developed countries coming and learning the, the um, uh, music forms, the dance forms, Bharatanatyam and uh, Yakshagana, uh, different uh, Mohaniyatam, and uh, such different uh, uh, forms of um, Natya Shastra. To just to learn that you can see many different people from many different uh, culture and many different uh, developed countries, they are coming here and learning. So yoga and Indian philosophy have become part of global cultural exchange and cross-cultural dialogue. Modern innovations, these are again the impacts of Indian knowledge system on development. India's contributions to modern science and technology, including the uh, growth of IT industry and space exploration, it demonstrates the continuation of the Indian knowledge system's innovative spirit. Global awareness and mindfulness, the, again, the, the popularity of yoga, meditation, mindfulness practices has led to greater global awareness of the importance of mental and physical well-being. 
and the ethical consideration the emphasis on ethics and moral principles in indian thought has influenced discussions on ethics in modern fields like businesses and politics and technology so here uh, as a teacher from uh, engineering college i should say that we have something known as uh, when we are undergoing the the inspections from nba or from uh, nac uh, we will be talking about the graduate attributes so in that one of the uh, attribute is the professional ethics okay so that as you can see it is not uh, part of the uh, modern or outsiders um, no it is actually we, what we have borrowed from our own indian knowledge system so in summary i should say the indian knowledge system has left a lasting imprint on modern knowledge acquisition and development not only through specific contributions but also through its holistic and interconnected world view this influence extends from across various domains from science and medicine to philosophy spirituality cultural exchange contributing to a more integrated and holistic approach to understand the world and addressing com contemporary challenges so uh, previously when i have talked about vedic wisdom the ancient indian knowledge can be traced back to the vedic period where the rigveda containing hymns and chants uh, which encompass com cosmological spiritual and philosophical insights and the philosophical foundations uh, we had um, indian thought flourished during the classical period where the upanishads explored profound philosophical questions about the nature of reality and the self and we have seen the buddhism and jainism where uh, ancient india saw the emergence of intellectual philosophical traditions which challenged and enriched the prevailing vedic beliefs so such things we have even seen now what were the challenges and the we have uh, experience and what are the different opportunities so the indian knowledge system which while rich and diverse faced several challenges in the modern era so some of the key challenges include globalization and westernization so the influence of western education and the culture has led to the er erosion of traditional knowledge systems and values in india so that is what has happened the traditional knowledge system which may have been documented which is not even which is not seen or it is being uh, uh, i should say hidden right so the values are not as such followed now which was followed in previous indian knowledge system and the loss of traditional touch or the traditional knowledge many ancient texts and the traditional knowledge systems are at risk of being lost due to lack of uh, preservation and documentation efforts most religious spirit uh, and spiritual heritage was there in india but indian india's ancient roots encompass a di uh, diverse range of religious and spiritual traditions but uh, some of the things actually after the modern um, i should say the westernization or maybe after the globalization we have lost some of the religious uh, base or the the traditions i think i should say then comes the uh, challenge as language barriers so the decline of classical languages like sanskrit as well as the dominance of english it has limited actually or it can limit access to traditional text and knowledge for a significant por uh, portion of the population so even if you say that you are an india uh, you are from india the our rashtriya or uh, our mm, uh, language is rashtra bhasha we say right rashtriya the the our language is hindi but many of the people uh, doesn't even know hindi so how can we talk about sanskrit now so it is now in schools and colleges if we see we can choose third language as either hindi or sanskrit so that is the culture now we have here but many of the students many of the people they are more fluent in english and they don't even know to read the lippi of our own country so that is one of the challenge we are facing then coming to the education system the modern education system often prioritizes rote learning and examination oriented approaches which can stifle creativity and holistic learning 
erosion of traditional practices traditional practices including agricultural methods and indigenous healthcare systems are being replaced by modern alternatives sometimes due to the detriment of sustainability and cultural heritage back to again challenges and opportunities religious and political tensions this is one of the uh, this is i think i should say this is more in india now conflicts and political tensions that can sometimes hinder the open exchange of ideas and knowledge and uh, commercialization and appropriation the commercialization of yoga and ayurveda that is one of the uh, problem here we are facing here so uh, pr previously it was the yoga was used for self realization ayurveda was used for healing the body right but now it has uh, been it is being commercialized and without due respect for their cultural and spiritual roots it has led to concerns of appropriation then the challenge what we are facing in indian knowledge system is the digital divide access to digital technologies and the internet remains uneven in india which can limit the dissemination of knowledge to marginalized communities next point is secular uh, secularism versus traditional values balancing the secular values with the preservation of traditional knowledge and practices it can be a challenge in a diverse and pluralistic society interdisciplinary it again again the uh, problem of, or the challenge which we are facing interdisciplinary integration the traditional indian knowledge system often divides knowledge into distinct categories but this can hinder interdisciplinary research and innovation environmental sustainability every college every school they say and talk about environment being protected but how many of them are actually taking care of uh even in uh, we will say environmental audit has to be there in an in education institution uh, it is as part of uh, the even ugc or um, aict those also mandates or the nac criteria mandates environment audit right adapting this traditional ecological knowledge to address modern environmental challenges it, it is and a struggle now it is an ongoing struggle i should say then comes the validation and modernization integrating traditional knowledge with modern scientific method while respect uh, respecting its integrity that is very complex because then comes uh, the problem is when we are doing the traditional or when we are trying to integrate the traditional knowledge some there will be some people which uh, they come and say talk about the religion there's some uh, some uh, talk about the custom some talk about the culture and so the integration of this is actually it is being very complex now now comes to the intellectual property rights all of you are familiar with what is this ipr right protecting and acknowledging the traditional knowledge which may be documented or which may not be documented in a globalized world where intellectual property rights are crucial it poses very big challenges and despite these challenges there are ongoing efforts within india and globally to revitalize or revive and preserve the indian knowledge system these efforts include educational reforms documentation initiatives and increased recognition of the value of traditional knowledge in addressing contemporary issues like climate change and sustainable agriculture so these are the uh, have we got any global recognition yes we have got okay we global recognition of indian gold system so there are many different opportunities for the revival and global recognition of the indian gold system which includes the digitization or digitalization so digitalization means leveraging the digital technology to preserve and disseminate traditional texts and knowledge to a global audience then you can say educational reforms incorporating incorporating elements of the indian knowledge system into modern curricula to foster a more holistic and integrated approach to learning i think that is the education reforms that means we most of us have taken or undergone the universal human values courses 
I believe. And it is uh, it has become a mandatory practice for each and every student in any colleges. They should also learn the universal human values system and um, uh, things. Then comes the cross-cultural collaboration, encouraging cross-cultural dialogues and partnerships to share and integrate Indian knowledge and with the global perspectives. Sustainability. Sustainability is an applying traditional Indian ecological knowledge to address pressing global challenges related to climate change and environmental sustainability. Wellness and healthcare, which promotes Ayurveda and other traditional healthcare systems for holistic well-being, attracting global interest. Yoga and meditation, uh, yoga and meditation, which can be used or which can further promote yoga and meditation as practices for mental and physical well-being on a global scale. Then intellectual property protection, advocating for the protection and recognition of traditional knowledge as intellectual property, ensuring fair compensation for indigenous communities. That should be done. Then interdisciplinary research, interdisciplinary research Encouraging interdisciplinary research that integrates traditional Indian knowledge with the modern scientific methods to address complex global issues. Then what we can do is uh, to get the global recognition for the Indian knowledge system, cultural diplomacy can be applied. That means utilizing India's rich culture or cultural heritage, including the music, dance, art, those can be used as a means of cultural diplomacy and global exchange. And the government obviously has to take some initiatives, supporting government initiatives and policies which promote the preservation and dissemination of traditional Indian knowledge. And tourism and culture, cultural exchanges can leverage India's cultural and historical assets to attract tourists and foster cultural exchanges which highlight its own our own knowledge uh, traditions. Then uh, what we can do is recognition in international forums. So advocating for the acknowledgement of traditional Indian knowledge at international forums and uh, for other challenges. So these, I can say that these opportunities uh, can help not only revive and preserve the Indian knowledge system, but also it can contribute to its global recognition and relevance in addressing contemporary challenges what we are facing now. So as, the, as a final thought, the Indian knowledge system, it is not uh, compartmentalized. It often blends the categories, emphasizing the interconnectedness of knowledge it has made profound contributions to both ancient and modern world civilizations and continues to be a source of inspiration and exploration for scholars and practitioners worldwide. So as a conclusion, let me say the enduring importance of Indian knowledge system lies uh, in its timeless wisdom, holistic approach to life, and its potential to offer valuable insights and solutions to contemporary global challenges, fostering a more interconnected and harmonious world. So as a conclusion, the moment we uh, understand that it is not I, it is we, and we as a family, we as a society, and we as uh, the universe. That is the holistic or interconnected approach our Indian knowledge system has. I think I was able to give an introduction to the uh, Indian knowledge system. So if any of you are having any doubt, please 